Welcome to this video which is a little bit different to what I usually do. Uh, think of it as a little bit of a mini review of these three Taurus Locos. I've got a Pico one, a Jägendorfer one and a Rocco one. Uh, it's kind of come about because I'm just getting into these Continental models myself and uh, I don't really know what the difference is between them. So when I've been buying them I thought I'll just buy one of each and uh, see which one's best and, and see which one's uh, better value and so on. So I can't really review them in the sense of which one's uh, most accurate and which one looks most like the prototype because to me they all look like Taurus Locos. Um, I'm sure somebody might say that the shape of one's better than the other or whatever but I've not got that kind of knowledge of them. Um, I've just seen them on holiday and I know roughly what they look like, but without going into any great detail. So, the first thing I'm going to do is just talk about the price of them. Um, because I think that's important, actually. Um, and it, it makes it hard to compare them. So, this one cost me roughly £63. This is the Pico one. So, think of this as an equivalent to Hornby Railroad. Um, although I'd say it's better than Hornby Railroad, which I'll go into a bit more detail about later. Um, I couldn't get another red one, um, so I've got a City Airport train livery, which is a shame, because it would have been nice for that review just to have three the same. But anyway, this is the Jägendorfer one, and this is the most expensive one. Um, the cheapest I could find a, a Jägendorfer one was around uh, £206. These prices all include tax, by the way. If you are buying them abroad, they might appear slightly cheaper, but you'll probably get charged tax when they arrive. Um, and then this is the Rocco one. Um, this one's the sort of just slightly cheaper at £196. Um, but they're still, well, the second two are three times the price of the uh, first one, roughly. So it's a bit of an interesting thing to think about as to whether it's worth buying three of the Pico ones or one of the others. Right, let's start by having a closer look at this Pico one. So overall, it's, it's hard to say it looks bad really, um, but you can see where it's cheaper and where they've saved the money. So. Look at this underframe, for example. You've got just sort of one moulding, very little detail. There's nothing where that sticker is, it's just all completely flat. Um, the bogey side frames are quite thick, but fairly detailed. But when you compare it to the other ones, it's just not so much on them. Um, look at the wheels as well. The wheels are quite good. The wheels have got a bit of detail on and there's quite a few transfers but when you compare it to the other two it seems like there might be some things missing. Um, the roof I think is very good, um, pantographs are fine and then like this area if it'll focus that's all quite detailed. So. Overall, it's it's good. Um, those grills look quite good as well. It's it's hard to fault it when you consider as well that it's a, a sixty pound model, well sixty three pounds. Like you, you're getting a lot for your money. Looks quite nice from ends as well. The the buffers are thicker on this one, probably because it's part of the. Uh, you have to pull them out to take the body off, so they've probably had to strengthen them. But it's it's really not bad. It, surprisingly, actually, because £63 really in today's money for a model isn't a lot, is it? So I wasn't expecting much. So I'm impressed with that, genuinely. Next up, we've got the Jägendorfer model. Uh, it's a shame I couldn't get a red one, but... I was going to probably buy a City Airport train anyway, so I, I got it as part of a set, which is a, a nice set. Um, look at the difference on the bogies compared to the Pico one. It's just so much sharper 
Obviously, this is a, a grey chassis compared to the black on the other two. Um, so it probably gives it an advantage in terms of how much things stand out. But everything's just so much finer. And like, look under there where the sticker was on the other one. Look at the extra pipe work and things like that. It's just, it's so much better underneath. You spot it straight away. Here, look, you've got, you've got like printed sections on, on there. Let's see if it'll focus. There we go. So yeah, it, it's obviously better. The steps are a lot better on this one as well, because the they're opened up so you can see through them like it should be. Really good. Um, the ends of it are nice and detailed. Windows are a lot more see-through on this one, which I think the other one does have a cabin area, but this is just a better cabin area, because you can see it more as well. And then the roof, I'm not 100% sure about the roof on this one. I don't think it's the best roof here. Um, the pantographs are fine. Like the pipe works fine. I don't, I don't know. I feel like this little area here is maybe better on the Pico one, but it's it's still good. Like it, it's very good and everything. In general, it's a good model. Um, you've got kind of a, a textured effect on the, some of this. Like I guess it'd be a somewhere where it, it were like grippy for the engineers to walk on. But on the other models, that's smooth. And on here, it's like a, a textured effect, which I quite like. So yeah, it's it's very good. Um, had to fault it again. But when you think that this is like over three times the price of the first one, you've got to say, is it worth it? And uh, only you'd be able to decide that really. The third model is this Rocco one. So I think this is the best in terms of detail, personally. It's my favourite one. It just seems more crisp. Everything about it is just a, a tiny bit better, similar to the Jägendorfer one. Um, it's miles ahead of the Pico one. But yeah, you've got your opened up steps again. You've got your your transfers and loads of separate parts on the, well, I don't know why it is, like a battery box type thing or something, but anyway, the, the moldings underneath. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just good. Um, look at it from the other side as well. This side's a bit plainer on all of them anyway, but yeah, it's just, even here, you've got like a little extra parts, the pipes are silver there. You just got like your, your speedo drive, I guess it would be, or various cables anyway, whatever they do. So yeah, that that's really good in my opinion. Um, you've got that slightly textured effect um, on those little strips that I think are maybe walkways, which you don't have on the other. This area is really detailed. I'll show you it from the other side, just because I did with other ones. Um, but yeah, that that just seems more detailed than the other two. Those grills are better than the other two as well. Um, I think those grills might be worse than the Jägendorfer one, to be honest. Even, even more so than the Pico one. Which is surprising given the price. But yeah, really good. Um, cab is good as well. This one needs the wipers sticking on separately. Uh, they come in the detail pack. So you have to do a little bit more with this one yourself. Um, so the Jägendorf is better for that. But I'd imagine once it's detailed up, this one's really going to look special compared to the other two. But I could be wrong. And it's just my opinion as well. It'd be interesting to hear what other people think. But yeah, oh, one more thing as well, where the Rocco wins. If I lay them down carefully, it's easier to explain what I mean. So if you look at the bogies, they 
actual bit that's not realistic on the bogey is this plastic box. If you look where it is on this one, it's quite high up, so you can't really see it from the side. That one, you can clearly see it from the side. And you can on the Pico one too. Probably the, the Pico one's worse, Diegendorf for second and Rocco best for that. Um, but if you're viewing it from low down, you're going to notice that and it's probably going to make a difference to what you think of the model. The next thing that I want to talk about with these models is what's inside them. So I'm just going to take the bodies off. I've already taken them off loosely just so they're a little bit quicker for the video. Um, I'll start with the Pico one with it being the cheapest and it's probably the one that's got the least in there. Um, sort of as you'd expect. First thing that I'd say it loses a few marks on if I were scoring them would be that you have to pull the buffers out to take the body off. It reminds me of an old Lima model, like a, a British class 47, where you had to pull them out. Um, it's not the end of the world, but it's just a little uh, groove here that you can get a screwdriver in. It's best to push it from inside rather than try and pull them just so you don't snap them or anything. Um, but it's quite good news when you get inside. Um, it's an 8 pin socket which is fine for a, a basic model. The thing that's most impressive is that you've got a decent sized motor in the middle. Uh, it doesn't look like there's a flywheel on it but I don't think it particularly matters. At least it's a, a powerful motor and drive shafts to both axles which if you compare it to something like a Hornby Railroad 66, um, which is even more expensive than this, you wouldn't get that. You'd just get a little motor at one end. So you've got to give it some credit for that. In terms of lights, it does have lights, but only white lights, so forward-facing lights. You won't get any red lights, which, again, it'd be better if it had reds, but it's better to have whites than nothing. Um, so I don't think it's bad. Um, in terms of fitting sound, one advantage you do have with this one is the amount of space you've got. So you could probably even get one of the new ESU speakers in if it went there. Maybe even the bigger size to be fair. Um, you might have to connect it to the roof facing down potentially. But there's, there's the space there for it. I'm sure you'd get that in. Or you could use something like the 25 by 25 That would go in that gap there. It kind of holds itself in. You could probably get two of those in. Um, so you've got a few options when it comes to sound. Probably more so than the others, which I'll show you in a minute. So it's hard to not like this model when you think how much it costs. Um, I'm glad it's got some lights. And I'm glad it's got a decent motor. Um, I've not run it yet, so I can't tell you how well it runs just yet. But all in all, I'm impressed with that. Um, we'll go for the Jägendorfer one next. Um, this one, body just done clips. It's very similar to taking the body off the Roco one. Um, this one's a little bit strange inside, actually. You've got a little thing here that spins round um, and it, I assume you can make it touch that side and possibly that's something to do with whether it's on AC or DC but I haven't tried it yet so um, I'm not too sure. This model, well the only one that I bought, factory sound fitted, um, supposedly factory sound fitted anyway although they've used one of these sugar cube speaker kits like the ASU one where you've got the double width enclosure um, but it looks like the model is designed to have round speakers screwed at each end because so you can see the, the space for them and the holes so I'm not convinced it's factory sound fitted but I'm not really bothered anyway I'm not judging it on that either because the other ones are not sound fitted yet but I'll be taking that speaker out um, you've not got as much space as in other ones, but you'll still probably get something like a 20 by 20 underneath the decoder at that end, which will be better than the sugar cube. Um, you might get some at both ends to be fair, so 
it, it's not bad. I'm quite quite happy with it. It's got a much more complex circuit board. Um, obviously, you've got white lights, you've got red lights, you've got high and low lights as well, which is common on these European style models. Uh, well, in the locomotives in general. Um, so that's something that the Pico one didn't do. I forgot to mention. So yeah, that that's good. More, a bit more complex. Definitely got some flywheels on that one. So I'd imagine it'll run better. But again, I haven't tried it yet, so I can't say for sure. But yeah, quite impressive. Can't really fault it for anything. So. That's that one, and then last up is the Roco one. So I'll just uh, take the body off that one again. It just unclips. I've already undone the clips just to make it a bit easier. It's not a million miles off what the Jägendorfer one looks like inside, but everything's a little bit more hidden. Um, but it's it's a full sort of circuit board across the whole thing, which covers most of the model. Um, similar kind of drivetrain with a, a centrally mounted motor and flywheels again. Um, you've also got on these a built-in speaker enclosure which goes underneath the circuit board but it's only designed for sugar cube speakers which I'm not a huge fan of. Um, I'd like to think that you could maybe get something like the 20 by 20 here but it's probably a little bit too high I'm not sure. But that's sort of the first thing that I'd try, just to see if it would fit there. And it'll give a, a better sound than what you'd get from a, a pair of sugar cube speakers with very little enclosure. Um, other than that, you've got similar kind of lighting with front and rear lights, as well as a high mode and a, a low mode. Um, yeah, not, not a huge amount else to say about it. Well, being a, a Roco model, I think it's fairly typical of them. You have this space here where you can solder some um, capacitors. So that's a nice feature, I guess, if you're wanting to fit stay lives. Although I prefer to use the, the three-wire stay lives so that you can uh, leave it connected while you're programming it. So that's something to think about. But yeah, not bad, all in all. If I was scoring them... I'd say probably the Jägendorfer one would win because you've got a bit more space for speakers and still all the same lighting modes. Um, I'd probably put the Pico one second just because it's so cheap. Um, and then this one comes third. Not that there's anything particularly wrong with it, but it's just not as easy to get decent speakers in, I wouldn't have said, as the Jägendorfer one and uh, it's expensive compared to the Pico model so even though it's a lot better in terms of lights and stuff it's just hard to say that it's worth three times the price so I suppose I can't really do a video like this without telling you which one I think's best so I'm going to tell you which one I think's the worst one first um, a lot of it's based on price I'll be honest but I just don't think that the Jägendorfer one is quite as good as the Roco one and it's £10 more expensive. I wouldn't say I wouldn't buy one again, um, but if the livery that I wanted were available in all three models, then I probably wouldn't be buying the Jägendorfer one. Um, so that's what I would personally put in third place. I'm really struggling with the other two because the the both good in different ways. I mean, how can you fault this for sixty three pounds? It doesn't really look much different to one which costs three times more. But just based on the fact that it's got lights and well extra lights like your red lights, your your high and low mode, I'm gonna have to say that the Roco one's the best. Um and if I buying more of these models, which I might. I think I would buy the Roco one. I really like it. So that's my preference and the one that I'd recommend if you're looking to get one yourself. But having said that, if you get the chance to buy one of these for £60, um, I don't think you'll be disappointed with it. And if you want to have more than one or whatever, you can always have your, your Roco as your favourite one. 
Um, maybe that'll be the one that you fit with sound and stuff. And then you might have a few of these to, to run on your layout as well. That's probably what I'll end up doing. Um, something about it just being so cheap. Um, I guess the word cheap doesn't do it justice, but being low cost, it's just, it is a bargain. So yeah, I would recommend both of them. Uh, well, I'd recommend all of them, but with my money, I'd rather have probably one Roco than three Picos. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. It'll be interesting to see other people's opinion. People who've sort of used these models as well, or people that are thinking about buying one. But yeah, hopefully people have enjoyed this video. Um, if you do enjoy it, let me know and I'll try and do something similar with other locos maybe. But yeah, thank you for watching. Once I've fitted sound to all these models, I'll maybe do a follow-up to let you know which speakers I use and whether my opinions changed at all whilst I'm fitting sound. If that's something that you'd like to see, make sure that you subscribe to our channel.